to another show. It is I, the Badger, and welcome to the show, the Badger Show. Yes, that's right. It's Spooky Saturdays once again. This week's creepy pasta is called the Doctor. So sit back, hide behind the sofa, and enjoy. It seemed especially hot there in the middle of the mass of vehicles, all shapes and sizes, from all around Florida. It was a miniature city of heat and exhaust fumes. Not the most wonderful place in the world, but then the morning commute to work never was. I was slightly later than normal. I'd had an appointment with my doctor, Dr. Bink Deadpool, that morning, which could not be skipped. I'd known my doctor since childhood, and his treatments had always done miracles, where his colleagues had seen nothing but darkness. Other professionals in medicine talked about my condition as some sort of great mystery of the world, like a UFO or an ancient Mayan temple. My condition was chronic, deadly and without any cure, or at least no cure until my doctor had began to treat me. The traffic moved forward a few yards and I almost started to hope that whatever caused the gridlock had gone. I had been disappointed by similar situations far too often in the past to begin to really and truly hope for a break in the traffic. But as a scientist, a rational man, I couldn't be hoping. I'd had to work with facts and figures alone. However, the traffic did indeed start to clear up, and I continued down to my chemical lab where I worked. I parked my car and walked in. My co-workers were already hard at work, hard at work solving the problems of the world, educated men of reason, each and every one of us pushing the masses towards progress. We were doing real work. I continued down to the area where I was based and sat down at my desk. The lab itself was rather bleak, especially the rooms for experimentation, but I'd gotten used to it. Besides, the decorations were unnecessary for hard-working men of facts. I briefly dug around my pocket for my prescription my doctor had given me. It was in my writing but that was only because my doctor had a hand problem. He dictated his prescriptions to his patients, trusting them with their health. I always trusted my doctor. It was trust he had earned over years of success. His treatments were successful, but unorthodox. My parents hadn't liked him, and the doctors my parents chose had only frowned and given me pills. The doctor didn't talk to me when I took those poison pills, so I never took them. This upset my parents very much, but I knew better. I knew my doctor knew me better than those other doctors. He could give me proper treatment. The newest treatment I would be undergoing was a special course, newly invented by my doctor. It was a truly visionary theory. I knew so. He recommended applying firm, steady pressure to the carotid artery for periods of time between four and five hours per day to attack my condition at the source. Ah, what genius. What a true visionary. Truly, he was the last great giant of the medical field. I had taken off my belt and fastened it tightly around my neck the way the doctor had shown me in his office. I began to feel very lightheaded and feel faint, but my doctor had said this was perfectly normal. I simply focused the slow, constricting, pounding feeling of my artery and the rasping of my breath growing steadily weaker. My doctor said that this would help remove some of the discomfort I would feel while treating myself. My vision had gone black, as my doctor had said it would, when I noticed several of my co-workers rushing to my desk and fiddling with the belt. Why? Why? Why must they interfere with the genius? I woke up in my hospital bed again. I don't like the hospital. The beds are so much less comfortable than in the asylum. For what I could gather, I had somehow gotten the belt and was trying to kill myself with it. I had been saved just in time by the insistence of the asylum. I tried explaining to the nurse what was really happening, but she wouldn't listen. I toned it down. I asked a little more about what I had talked about while I was delusional. Ha! As if men of science can be deluded, 
she told me, and I had thought I was in the chemical lab where I used to work, and that the assistants of the asylum gather that was new. I didn't remember going back there after my appointment with the doctor. It must have all been a trick, just one of the methods those assistants had thought of trying to do to get me to swallow the poison. The nurse handed me a pill and a glass of water. I held the pill up to my mouth and pretended to swallow it, like I always did. Then I laid back in the bed until the nurse was satisfied. I spit out the pill as soon as she left. I sat up in the bed and stomped it to dust. They would never suspect I guessed their trick of trying to poison me. Everything else was the same. My doctor's genius would never be appreciated. I hated to bother him so much. His plans were always being upset. I hadn't been allowed to spring from the balcony to cure myself of the pressure on my spine or eat the fungi to cure myself from the stomach pains. And now my doctor's latest attempt had foiled again. I would have to go back to him. Luckily, he was a man of science and reason. Like me, neither of us would stop until we found a cure. I hope you enjoyed this creepy pasta, The Doctor, featuring Bink Deadpool. And of course, sound off in the comments below. Did you think it was spiffing or a load of old piffle? Please comment below your views on this week's creepypasta, Spooky Saturdays. And I'll see you next time on Tuesday for another top five. Bye for now.